I'm going to call this meeting to order. And before beginning the activities planned for today's meeting, um, I just wanted to ask that everyone take just a moment, just a moment of silence um, as we, we recognize the great loss that has occurred in Texas in a school. I think even, even though it's far away, we all, all of us who work with schools and have kids in schools feel deeply affected when we hear this sort of news. So I just, I'd like us just to take a moment to, to reflect. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, and now we will try to move forward with our plans for the afternoon. Um, today with our town hall format, the thought is that we will flip the tables a bit and we have invited our director of schools, Dr. Battle, and our board chair, Christian Bugs, to um, ask questions of the audience and ask questions of our MMPS parents and families. Um, of course, this is to be moderated by the Parent Advisory Council. I serve as the board liaison for the council. Um, and as also an MMPS parent, I am very appreciative on many levels of all the work being done by the PAC. Um, and to move forward with the activities, I am going to invite our PAC chair, B.B. Hines, to come up and sort of give us an overview of how this is going to work. Good afternoon. All right, thank you all for coming. Um, wanted to thank Dr. Battle and Christian Bugs for carving out some time for us today. Um, and we do have some um, PAC officers present. Um, I'm the PAC chair. We've got Kevin Walker, who's our vice uh, chair. Don and Bethina, who are secretaries. So if you um, have any questions about the PAC, please um, talk to one of us and we can answer all of your questions. Um, we spent the school year firing questions at um, the execs. We did that almost every month and we had lots of hot seats. I think some of them still came back, so we're glad they came back. Um, but today we're going to turn this around and Dr. Battle and Ms. Bugs are going to be the ones asking the questions. And we didn't give them any guidelines. They're allowed to ask whatever they want to ask. They have earned it. Um, so get ready. But while, we're, while they're doing that, if you um, take a look at the table over there under that television right by the entrance, um, we have some doodling work for folks who want to participate. We put together a give-get chart with some post-it notes. And the idea is that as parents, if there's something that you want to get from MMPS, you just write it on the post-it note and stick it in the get section. But then for every get, there needs to be a give. So if there's something you want to give to MMPS, write that on there and post it there. You don't have to put your name or anything. We're gonna be gathering all this information and um, presenting it to Dr. Battle over the summer. And so with that, I'm gonna invite Kevin Walker. Afternoon, everybody. I have the privilege of just introducing our two uh, speakers here who will be with us this afternoon for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, Chairperson Bugs and uh, Dr. Battle. You all know them, but I'll just want to say briefly um, how much I've enjoyed working with them, getting to know them. Uh, Dr. Battle was at our, my son's high school graduation this past Saturday, did a fantastic job at uh, speaking at McGavick's graduation. I want to thank you both for your service um, and for your care and love for our kids. As a long time parent in this uh, district, I, I can't think of a time when the working relationship between the board and the director of schools has been better and stronger and um, aligned. So I'm excited for that and for the future. So I turn it over to you two uh, ladies. If y'all want to make comments, ask us first. The floor is yours. Thank you. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, PAC members, parents, uh, board member masters, colleagues, friends, MNPS supporters, lovers of young people. I just do want us to sit with this for just a moment because I look in the faces of so many mothers and fathers that this is why we're here. Something like Texas happens because we do not support every child as best we can as cities, as states, as a country, because at 18 years old, that shooter is still a child that needs support, that needed protection, that needed resources. And the elementary school students that succumbed to this unfortunate event were, were they were supported by continue to be loved by, and unfortunately now are grieved by parents, by teachers, by bus drivers, by cafeteria staff. Our work is so important because everyone in the city is responsible for the children that live there because children don't ask to be here. So I am particularly appreciative of Dr. Battle, her staff, our teachers, our principals, our parents, everyone that makes MNPS function and everyone that makes Nashville as a city function. So I'm gonna give myself the space and I hope to offer you the space to feel whatever you need to feel about this because that hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, but with that said, it's not all doom and gloom. We, we know that the situations that our children come from and that our children sit in and that our children go to are not always optimal. And we're not just talking about in their own homes, we're talking about in the communities we live in. And so we've got to continue to just collaborate and refine and make sure that a system that frankly was not built for every child at least is customized to every child. How do we make sure that um, the new American student has the resources they need. How do we make sure that that baby that was born prematurely, that maybe had a health issue, is supported? How do we make sure that educators have all of the resources they need to support these babies? And so um, I, I do want to let us feel what we need to feel, but focus on the idea that it's not all doom and gloom, that that is why we have these kinds of conversations, so that in August, when our babies go back to school, they, the school building that they left in May, even though we hope it was great, is even better in August. That parent advisory councils, PTOs, um, partner groups are ready to do the heavy lifting of raising babies who didn't ask to be here, but who are here to be loved, okay? So with that, we know we all have a role to play, but we don't always quite flesh out what our different roles are in the lives of our children, the, 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 the lights of our lives, right? If you would have asked me six years ago, seven years ago, what a board does, I would have had a very convoluted answer. But now that I'm a parent, I realize how important it is to understand who do I go to when I have an issue, and who do I praise when something has gone well for my child. So take that for a second. What do you think MNPS's role is, and I'll say MNPS because it's extremely vague. What do you think MNPS's role is? Two, what do you think the role of the board is for MNPS? And then what do you think the role of the city is? And by the city, I don't necessarily mean leadership, I mean we as community members, as a city. So again, what is the role of MNPS in supporting our babies? What is the role of the MNPS board in supporting our babies? And then what is the role of every city member, every neighbor, every community member in making sure we, edu we support our children? Not just educate, but support our children. Feel free to answer any of those. And we can popcorn style it. Feel free to just raise your hand. Uh, you can come to the mic. Yeah, and whoever chooses to take on one of the questions will need to come up here to the mic to answer so that, it, so that we can all hear. And let me make sure I'm gonna be the, the, the educator that we are, you know. There is no wrong answer. This is great <laughs> feedback, especially for the board, but sure for Dr. Bell and her staff. And feel free to answer any part of that. What is the role of MNPS? What is the role of the board? What is the, pro the role of the city in supporting our babies? Who wants to take that one on? Ooh. Well, look, I think she was voluntold, but we'll take that. Voluntold. <laughs> I'll say next to you. Let's go. 
love it. I love it. Look at the collaboration in practice. What was the first question? What is the role of either MNPS, the school board, or the city in educating your child as you see it? You want to introduce yourself. Yes, so my name is Ashley Carter. Um, I'm a resident here in Nashville, Tennessee. I have two children, um, ages five and six, two young girls that are currently homeschool. So I'm here today to find out why should I enroll my children in Metro Nashville Public Schools? Is this a safe place for them to receive a quality education or should I continue to homeschool? So how can I So. I believe the role of Metro Nashville Public Schools as a whole is to use the resources provided to them to ensure that our children have a quality education. I believe that the role of the board is to request the needed resources from the city and the state and make sure that they are allocated to the proper departments within Metro Nashville Public Schools and that means not only for the children but for the care providers, teachers, bus drivers, everyone to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And I believe that the city's role, not just um, city government, but us as a community, is to set the standard for what it means to be a Nashvillian. What it means, what type of education do we want our children to receive? What type of future do we want for our city? Because these are not kids, these are children, they're actual human people. And I think that there's a disconnect between um, looking at the children as just objects or not understanding their true significant value for our future. So yes, that's all. Great question and sentiment. Thank you for that. And so I will say, I, I believe I have the youngest MNPS student. We just had preschool graduation. He went from the three-year-old pre-K to four-year-old pre-K because I'm that mom. Um, if you don't mind me offering me your offering you your my very biased um, opinion, MNPS has been great for my baby. I just can't wait for him to be old enough to ride the bus and be ready for aftercare, but um, I appreciate that in our school that is considered under-resourced, that is considered, you know, it's, it's in an under, um, under-supported community, that there are high expectations. And that was the main, that was, if I were to answer this question as a parent before I came, or as a, a teacher before I became a board member, I would say the role of MMPS is to support every child and to support, uh, to support high expectations. The expectations are high at Jones. And so I would, I, I believe I could speak for Dr. Battle in saying that we are setting high expectations to make sure that these babies can meet them, but also scaffolding and offering supports when children um, have had any kind of foundational supports that they need. I have a point of clarification. Dr. Gentry? Uh, yes. You say under-resourced, you don't mean the school. Mean I mean the community school. is under-resourced. Touche, Ed, touche, yes. Yeah. So uh, 37208 just has a different connotation associated with it after a Forbes article said that we, were, we had the highest incarceration rate in America. My son is thriving there. He knew what a hexagon was at three. I had to look it up because I thought, I thought it had five sides. That's a pentagon. <laughs> so there's that. Please don't take my degree away from me, but there's that. And so, um, I, you know, this, this leads me into another question. If you don't mind me going off script, Dr. Battle and... Okay. <laughs> then I'll go off, this, off script. Okay. Go ahead. I just jumped Grace. up here because I wanted to respond to the question. I know you mentioned, well, first of all, I'm Paula Pendergrass. I'm the current vice president of MNEA, but I'm also a parent of MNPS student, and all three of my children have come through MNPS. Um, my son just graduated from SMU in Dallas, Texas, um, a soccer player, and so now I'm hoping he's <laughs> going to get a decent job. Um, and then my daughter's uh, uh, she's a um, she's a rising South, uh, senior. I mean junior, and she is actually getting ready to go study abroad in South Korea. And and just to answer your question, like why should you have your your children? Uh, well, you want to you, doing homeschool. Why should you switch over to MPS? Well, this is my 27th year teaching, and when I started, um, I remember thinking, you know, where am I going to buy a house? Am I going to buy a house in Williamson County? Am I going to homeschool? And I just kept coming back to the, the district where I teach. And what was key for me is the support. Not only the support, I mean, it started with 
me as a teacher. And the first year I taught, I remember my mom had passed away. But my building admin and also the teachers surrounded me and gave me the support that I needed. And not only that, I didn't even have my advanced degree at the time, but I went on to get my doctorate. And that was because from the support that I have. And I remember once I had my babies, I remember um, Jill Spearing was uh, doing reading recovery at the time. And she allowed me, uh, I was trying to think about my dissertation. Dr. Paul Changis you know, helped me with my dissertation, the stats. Um, she let me breastfeed my baby while I was actually um, trying to figure out uh, the reading recovery because I did my dissertation on that. But the support that I saw that they were giving me, I also wanted that support for my children. And they have, I mean, MPS has never once failed any of my kids. Even um, Lawson now, I, I feel like he's just on autopilot, like with me being um, a leader within the district. He comes home and says great things about, you know, his school and Dr. Underwood and the teachers. And so I, I'm a huge supporter of MNPS because it does take a village to raise a family. I could not imagine doing this work by myself. And the fact that, you know, um, even like when I started teaching Abigail was, um, I remember, she, I just thought she was so smart. I used to sit right beside her and just take in. <laughs> <laughs> You're still smart. Take in just all her energy and everything and just to learn from her. So just the support that has been given to all three of my children. And I, I mean, I cannot imagine any other school district um, to bring up your, your child, especially if you want that support. I would definitely encourage you um, to really take a look at MNPS because it's the best place to be. I'm definitely biased because I'm just going on what I saw for myself and my family, and it has been working ever since. Sure. Um, so. Thank you all for that. I say keep pondering on that. Keep pushing us. Keep thinking about what it is that the board does. I will very briefly say, if you've never heard, the Board of Education has three functions or three responsibilities. We evaluate and hire a director of schools. We codify, ratify a budget that we send on to council and that we discuss with the mayor. And then we develop policy that aligns our strategic plan with the mission of the, uh, the school system and data that we receive. Now, true, we have certain advocacy um, uh, requirements that may not explicitly be written into our charter, but that we know are necessary. And that just means that we have to advocate to the state, we have to advocate to the mayor, and we have to advocate to the community at large about the, ne the necessity of public education. But with that, we have not quite asked what your experiences are. So what celebrations or, or successes are you seeing in your school, in your neighborhood? If y'all don't speak up, I'm gonna talk about Jones all day, baby. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Walker, parent of uh, two kids in M NPS, one that just graduated. Um, this is easy to answer. I'll start with this. Um, I'm United Methodist, and every Sunday we do a we have a sacramental rite where every Sunday we have a, the pastor says, "Okay, now this isn't our table. This is Christ's table. Everyone can come to the table." And unfortunately, in our church, typically everyone who comes to the table looks like me. Now. I remember a few months ago, we were at Caliber Coffee uh, in Donaldson, hanging out with the, my son and some of his kids. They were eating and drinking some coffee and stuff. And I looked at the table, and there was my white son, and there was his black friends, and there was his Filipino friend, there was his transgender friend, and there was his Muslim friend, and then there was this uh, friend that was from Guyana. And I realized, my God, because they were there, it was after a band thing, and they were all in band together, and I realized, MNPS has done what God's church itself couldn't do, which is get all these different people together all around the same table. That is something I cannot be more profoundly grateful for for my son. Uh, my daughter has had the very same experience um, through her experience from uh, Hickman Elementary, Donaldson Middle to McGavick High School. That's something I celebrate as, as part of um, who we are. We live in a culture that is so... Uh, try nowadays so divisive that this is one of the few places left in our culture that truly people from around uh, all, all kinds of different backgrounds uh, and cultures uh, can intermingle and I'm particularly and profoundly grateful for that thank you for that thank you I 
I have to represent. Um, so I have had, uh, I have one child, and I'll kind of tell you the story because when I became a parent of an MMPS student, I realized you're supposed to have two kids because the first one is like the sacrificial lamb you stick out there and you figure out how to do it along the way, okay? I only have one. I, and there's, I was talking to Ashley earlier and she was like, don't give yourself that much pressure. Well, I do, all right? But so, uh, yes, we do. Um, so my daughter went to Creve Hall Elementary School. I will tell you one thing. That was my first foray into MMPS, and I fell in love. Um, the community there, Dr. Miley, Smiley Miley, Bowtie Miley. I mean, a teacher who, I mean, a principal who just the children love. The things that he does, the way that he engages, it gave my child like that engagement into school that I always wanted her to have. And so I went, I sent her off to school every day and she was so happy and I was so excited. And even um, during COVID, we stayed home for the amount of time that we had to stay home. But when school opened up, we sent her. And she was so excited because mom's school was really tough. But then we had to go to middle school at fifth grade. She was little, she was only nine, you know? And, um, and middle school's for big people. And so I was terrified. And, but here's the thing. I give Dr. Lewis credit for this. He kept coming to Creve Hall since she was in kindergarten and he would set up these little tables and he'd give away chip clips and all kinds of fun stuff and talk to them about being the zoo school. She was hooked. I couldn't get her off of it. She was so hooked. And so she, here we go. We're going off to Croft, the zoo school. Um, you know, one of the things, she was very young, and the first nine weeks were the toughest nine weeks of my life. I actually sat down with five of her teachers and cried in her math classroom because it was such a tough transition for the tiny, she's very tiny, for the tiniest little girl. And she would come home and cry, and we would have these hard, hard times. If it wasn't for those five teachers in that classroom who spoke to me, who saw my daughter for who she was, who then kind of worked with me and with her to kind of make that transition, I might not be here today because I might have put her in private school or in a charter school or something like that. So I can honestly tell you that the teachers and your engagement as a parent, I know my girl. And when I came to them and I said, she's changing, I don't see her anymore. She's not the same kid. That, that happy little fourth grader who left Creve Hall Elementary, I wanted that back. And that, that child is at Croft, happy, bubbly, wonderful. And it's because of all of the different people. You know, Miss Bruce is her favorite teacher. She's going to Creve Hall next year. She's actually so upset because she won't see her in the hallway. But I will also tell you it's because of this woman right here in the front row, Rachel Ann. She and Frida, I must say Frida Player Peters also comes. So of our Overton Cluster PAC meetings, she shows up. She shows up as a parent, she shows up as a board member. And I have never felt closer to this place than I have since, since our board members became involved because it keeps me engaged, it keeps me aware, and it keeps me involved. And I, that I can't, I appreciate more than anything because I feel like when I send her that if I have an issue, it can be addressed. And trust me, they come up. So I, I have twins, they're my first, so I have two to break. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, that's how Rachel Ann and I connect. We both have twins. Um, so we're going to take a mental break, um, and we want to talk about how you can get information about MMPS and PAC during the summer months. What we're planning to do during the summer is um, to plan. We have to recruit new members for the PAC. We're trying to get more clusters engaged. Um, but one of the questions is, if I have to reach MMPS during the summer, if I have questions, who do I contact? So if there's someone from MMPS who could come up and tell us parents um, how we can reach you and you know, once the doors close and before it opens again, that would be great. And then we can resume questions. 
with I Dr. just want to know, what is summer? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> because, uh, and I would say the MMPS school board is always available. So please feel free to go on the website if you don't have our contact information. You can contact us year round, even if it takes us just a little bit longer to get back to you because the pandemic made everyone go virtual. But still, reach out to us. Our principals, um, they're still, what, 11, 12, 12 month employees. Yeah. So you can email them as well. Um, I, I know, Mr. Bray said you were coming up to get an official response. I'm just giving you a loose one. Covering it right there. Uh, you know, it, the principals are still your main approach contact as uh, if, for school officials, the board, Dr. Battle, uh, communications at MMPS.org if you want to send an email. We also have our family information center that is open uh, 12, uh, 12 months a year. And so they'll be there to answer your questions if you have a call about a specific concern. And we'll try to get that followed up uh, immediately. Also, just keep following us on social media throughout the summer where we post uh, information information critical uh, to uh, the return of school and the summer uh, learning program, Promising Scholars. Um, and then uh, we uh, look forward to starting the school year strong. Thank you. And, and I'll just add this extra layer because I've run into a couple of parents who maybe are not as comfortable with virtual conversations and they want a physical building to go to. Please feel free to come to 2601 Bransford Avenue because our uh, staff really is here to answer questions. There's nothing like panicking in July because you think your kid is in pre-K, but you don't quite know if you accepted the seat. And so you don't just want to drop them off in August. I'm not saying it was me, but I'm just <laughs> throwing it out there that if you need to show up, they are here, and it was, it was, uh, it was interesting for me because even though I was board chair, it was obvious that the the person helping me was not didn't see me as a chair, and maybe didn't even know that I was chair, and it was just helping me. So, what's your name? All right, how do you spell that? Can you give me an ID? And so I, I say that I use that as an example to say that if they would help me and not know who I was, they will help anyone. So please, feel free to uh, to use any of those avenues. Uh, we did have a bit of a loose agenda in that there are certain things that many parents do want to understand. Maybe how is it that I can, can get involved? There's one, it's one thing to have questions or concerns. It's another to want to lend your voice and help shape the way that your, your, your child's school, um, you know, how it is supported. What does family and parent engagement look like to you? What does it feel like? So I'll repeat that. What does family or parent engagement look or feel like to you? We have a winner. Hey, my name is Ashley Gish. I have a four-year-old um, who is going to be probably the youngest student in his class. <laughs> he was born on August 15th, what? so he That's will be... Hey. Dr. Gentry and I, that's our birthday, so we appreciate him. It's a good him. day. He can it's be our day. triplet. That's so fine. he will... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you in trouble, baby. That's a Leo. So, yes, he he is a Leo. Um, he is <laughs> So he'll be starting kindergarten, actually, as, as a four-year-old for a few days. So, um, but for me, I think... It was really important for me to get involved early in my kids' education. I went to MMPS for elementary school. I kind of bounced. I got the sampler platter. I did some private schools. I did some Williamson County schools. I did some Franklin schools. I did some Nashville schools. And we chose to move back to Nashville when we started our family. So um, it was really important for me to get involved early in my kids' school. And for me, what that involvement looks like is creating community. I really want our kids' schools to be places where it's not just a place you drop your kids off at the door every day and say goodbye. It's really a place where you become a family with that school community and you support each other. You can help pick up each other's kids from school. You can, um, you know, meet up at the PTO meetings and figure out ways to solve problems in the school and make sure that you are creating a partnership with those teachers and um, supporting the teachers. Because my line that I will always remind people, um, and I don't have to remind our PTO board this because we all believe it and live it, is our teacher working conditions are our student learning conditions. And so we want to make sure that we are backing up our teachers and um, giving them the support they need to, to love on and educate our kids every day. So I really think that that word community is something that's central to how I view that family engagement. I love that. Thank you. All right, so in that same vein, 
what might be a recommendation you have? What's an area of growth that MMP, sit, sit, sit down. What's an area of growth that MMPS could consider around parent supports? Please do. Yeah. So I think I would be a little remiss if I didn't also acknowledge um, what we've learned has happened in Texas today, um, recognizing that it is a parent's, a teacher's, a support staff, a director of school's worst um, nightmare. And we want to make sure that we're educating our kids, but we understand deeply that we have to protect them and to make sure that they're in safe places. Um, and so one thing that might be circling about in your minds is how is MMPS responding to this? And so our team is already kind of out um, having conversations, working with MMPD, reminding our teams of all of our protocols. We don't know all the details yet of what exactly occurred, but we want to make sure our team, our staff is ready um, to receive our students in safe places um, tomorrow. So um, I just wanted to share that with you since you are here and not sitting at your emails and computers um, that um, our team is definitely in the response um, phase. Before going to Chair Book's um, question, um, you know, one of the things as you were asking that question that I was thinking about was communications, right? I mean, there's parent engagement is a large component of that, but how we communicate matters and how you uh, perceive our avenues of communication, modes of communications matters to us building those strong pipelines um, of parent engagement. And so I just wanted to put that plug out there that if you have feedback for us around how we communicate, how frequently we communicate, I know communications come from the district and then they come from the school and then they come from the teacher. Um, and we try to pay attention to those communications, but it's important for us to take a moment of pause and reflection to see what's working, what's not working, um, so that we can continue to improve. And like now is the time for us to make some adjustments um, if there are some upgrades or improvements um, that we can think through and think about moving into next school year. So I want to um, kind of piggyback on um, Chair Bug's question to get your feedback around communications as well as a possible um, upgrade or acknowledgement around what's working or not um, in MMPS schools. Oh, I'm not saying anything. I just want to introduce this parent here. Um, we have a translator, so um, she will. Uh, our translator will translate her comments for us. Thank you. And as we are walking up front, she said, please excuse uh, the way I'm dressed. Sorry. No, I just, it's okay. She works in painting, and so she came from there to here. Can you yes. <laughs> you can tilt it down. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, she said excuse her for her her work pants. Please convey that we are not <laughs> eh, tengan todos muy buenas tardes los presentes que están acá. Good evening to everybody who is present here tonight. Es un gusto conocerles. It was nice to meet all of you guys tonight. Ah, uh, pues yo vengo a opinar sobre nosotros como padres de familia y ustedes como maestros, pues En mi opinión, pues yo tengo tres hijas y siempre pues yo les digo a ellas que el respeto pues viene de nuestras casas y pues ustedes son como padres de familia para ellos. Um, I want to thank you all for teaching my children and, uh, and for giving the support to my children. But also, uh, like I tell my three kids that all, they're all going to school here. I tell them also that your teachers are like your parents as well. Oh, um, oh, yo siempre eh, pues me pongo a pensar a veces hay muchos hay muchas niñas que pues salen embarazadas a los 15 años y pues quizá no tienen la mayor atención pues en sus hogares de parte de sus padres y pues por eso es que acuden a buscar pues en otro lado el amor que en el hogar pues no se les da. Unfortunately, there's a lot of young mothers like at age 15, because a lot of the love, a lot of the support they didn't get from their homes, they end up pregnant. And um, because the lack of that attention and lack of that love that they didn't receive at home, they look for it somewhere else. Y pues ustedes como maestros y directores, pues yo sé y comprendo que tienen una gran responsabilidad con todos los alumnos porque no es fácil para ustedes estar con ellos ahí porque pues a veces hay muchos problemas y sin embargo ustedes siempre están ahí para ellos y muchas gracias por eso. 
and I understand as teachers and everybody in, that works at the school system, I understand it's not easy to work with all the students. I understand that it's, it's a big task for you guys, but uh, I just wanna tell you all the how thankful and grateful I am for all the, the support you give the students. Uh, eh, tengo mis hijas en la escuela y pues eh, tengo una hija de 17 años que está, que está en la John Kennedy y pues los maestros con ella pues se han portado muy bien. My 17-year-old daughter attends John Kennedy School and all the staff, the teachers have been very nice to her. Oh, y tengo otras dos hijas que, ay no recuerdo cómo se llama la escuela, pero pues sí, los maestros son, son muy buenas personas con ellos y pues sí les están enseñando. My other two daughters go to another school, and they also they, they get great um, support, and they're very nice to them as well. Y pues, um, uh, con esto que está pasando en Texas, pues ahí sí que solo orar por lo, por lo que está pasando, porque el único que nos puede ayudar en esto, pues es, es nuestro Señor nada más. And just like what's going on in Texas, it's, it's very sad because all we can do is just pray for all of them, is all we can do. Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you so much for, for your time. Well, I was not going to double dip, but since you asked, you know, what's one thing, there's one thing that I would love to see us tackle next year and in the future. I've talked to Emily about this tangentially is the school support organization process, roles, responsibility, all that whole, just the whole beast of it. Um, I helped start the uh, SSO at McGavock High School and uh, First, let me just say the SSO off people that we work with in your office, Toronto, uh, yeah, she's been fabulous. Everyone, whenever we reach out to them, have been great. This isn't a, um, uh, a complaint or, or about any one person. It's about the whole process. It's um, that when we talk, or at least the scuttlebutt is when, when parents are getting together from other counties, why can't you do it like that? And we're, we are trying to adhere to whatever rules or regulations we have here, but that whole beast just needs addressed. Um, it, our first exposure to uh, Metro National Public Schools was through a fall festival at Hickman Elementary. Hickman would do a fall festival every year. Uh, teachers would do stuff in their classrooms. Parents would buy little tickets, and then it was put on by the PTO, and then the teachers would get the money at the end of the night for stuff in their classroom. You know, once uh, some new uh, SSL regulations got in place, that was, they, they stopped doing that. So I would love to see us tackle the SS at five minutes. Oh, tackle the SSO stuff. I would be willing to be a part of that conversation. I'm thinking like a lean project where you look at the whole thing. What really is state policy, state law versus what's not, and how do we just improve that so that we're really encouraging uh, parents? One, one last example is the whole insurance thing. There, you, Every SSO, a PTO has to have insurance. We had a new softball uh, SSO start. They couldn't have meetings on school property until they paid insurance. It's just stuff like that, you know, and, and again, it's all stuff that just needs addressed. So that would be one thing if we could tackle that. I just wanna piggyback on that real quick too, because when Kevin and I have talked about this issue with school support organizations and PTOs, he, I actually sent him, every piece of board policy that has to do with school support organizations and videos. I said, you read this and we're gonna get together and we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna figure this out because it is, um, I'm very passionate about PTOs. I was a seven year PTO president, past president, president, treasurer, secretary, whatever. Um, so it, just to say that I am so appreciative of the type of partnership that can be forged, that I feel comfortable going to the vice chair of the Parent Advisory Council and saying, read all this policy and tell me what you make of it and how we can get together and we can get at this together. And I see Dr. I see Charlita Sanders back there, who's one of the amazing assistant principals where I was PTO president. So, but yeah, it's all about everybody coming together and the partnerships, and I appreciate that. And I am ready to dig in on that. And I know that Chair Bugs is as well. We've talked about it a lot. So we'll 
what was the question again? Um, uh, around for family and parent engagement. Yes. Okay. One minute. Like, you run a you run Man, a tight ship. I got a timer. <laughs> Y'all got the timer going. Um, hi everyone. I'm Berthina Nabama McKinney. I am I'm a parent of a third grader in District Four. Um, First of all, I want to thank Dr. Battle and her team. Um, this is the first time that I have seen in the time that I have been with Metro over 25 years, the level of engagement that we have with the district, um, the level of engagement that we have with the school board, and the level of engagement that we have with the city. And I want to thank BB for your leadership in kind of leading this effort. Um, to make sure that we have this level of engagement. Now, saying all of that, we still have a lot of room for improvement, but this is the first step and we have laid the foundation and what I'm hopeful is that we continue to build on top of this year after year after year where parents have a place and a voice in decision making and the way in which we are working to support our young people across our district. And I'm really hopeful and excited and happy about these opportunities. And I hope we continue to break down barriers and knock down doors. Now, for me, my son is in third grade. We do a lot, I've heard in the, you know, we hear often about what's not working well in MNPS. Let me tell you about what is working well in MNPS. My son has been a third grader throughout this year. He was um, at one school last year. He's at another school this year. And we talk about um, financial literacy. This is something that our kids need to learn. I will tell you, my son was given a budget of $2,500 to do a trip to California. That kid came back home and said, yeah, I just finalized my budget today. I said, what budget? He said, yeah, I'm doing a trip with my buddy to California, and this is what we're gonna do. He talked about the cost of his plane tickets for him and his buddy to fly and which airlines was cheaper versus the other airlines. He talked about hotels and which hotels they were gonna use. He talked about his trips. We're gonna go to the zoo, cause this zoo is free, but then we're gonna spend $90 times two to go to Disney World. He talked about car rentals and whether it was a compact car, a mid-size car, or a full size. I'm sitting up here like my 21-year-old was like, dang, I don't even know that. <laughs> and so these are some of like the great things that they are learning within our school that we often hear that are not occurring, but are really occurring within our classrooms. So I wanna say that in his school it's happening, God willing, in all of the schools, this is happening. Yes. But we want to make sure that we're not only talking about our opportunities for improvement for MNPS, but we're celebrating the great things that are happening in MNPS with our kids day in and day out. Doesn't negate the fact that we still have opportunities to grow, but I really want us to acknowledge yeah. that MNPS is doing some work, y'all. Yeah. They're doing some great work. This is kid number six for me. <laughs> It's the last one. The one next to him just graduated from Vanderbilt, and he was an MNPS graduate. You were almost so done. I am almost, almost, I was almost done, but you know, hey, he's such a blessing. At least I'm not an empty nester. So some of the concerns, two concerns and opportunities for growth that I think that we need, I wouldn't be remiss if we didn't bring up. One is improving communication. Right? Improving communication from our parents to our schools, our schools to our district, and our district to the community. There's always opportunities for growth. It is not equitable across our district. Some schools are doing really well at it. Some schools are not. I would love to see it be across our district, across MNPS. Communication, we're such a big district, and so this, I think, should be a priority. The second thing that we have is prioritizing social, emotional, and mental health support. Not only for our students, but for our staff. 
across the district. Because as Ashley mentioned, <laughs> right, if we're not taking care of the people that we're expecting to love on our kids, it's not gonna help. So we have to create both, both of those environments. And then the last thing is safety. We just experienced this, this shooting in Texas. 14 elementary students were killed and one teacher. That's the current count. There's many who have been left off to hospitalize. We have to prioritize safety and it, it, it's not either or, it's both and. We have to look at that social, emotional, and mental health piece so that we can reduce the violence piece and put those things in place. And those are the three th opportunities for me that I see, that I hear from parents consistently. The communication, safety, social, emotional, and mental health. And then we can talk about learning gaps. <laughs> but that's another conversation. But thank you. Okay, so we are over time. I just want to mention something real quick. We, I, one, one minute. One thing with these packed town halls, we always run out of time. We asked for a monthly town hall, and due to time, we weren't able to get it. So the hope is that we will figure out ways to create more time for, for these types of conversations because we can't do it during the very formal school board meeting. With the equity, educational equity committee that Abigail Taylor has started, I believe that is the start of better communication. With the workshop that El Mahava and PAC and MP have did this Saturday, that's starting the communication. So I believe that we need to create more time for these things to, to really work so people can tell their stories and then get into their complaints. Because we spent a lot of our time celebrating each other before we finally got to not the very good stuff. So, um, Emily, do you wanna? Yeah, um, thank you for that, BB. Um, also, very appreciative to all who shared um, feedback with us um, today. Um, always good to reflect. Again, this is a great time to do so. Um, one of the things, I mean, I just, I just feel like I need to take just about 30 seconds. Um, as a incoming parent myself, um, as a teacher, as a principal, as a director of schools, um, you need to hear me say that I've sat in the seats that your children are sitting in and um, with a deep desire that nothing that happens in our schools happens by accident, but that we are intentional and that we are designing our experiences to meet the unique needs of our students. In fact, you've heard our mantra this year um, around every student know, and that's a work in progress. We're transform transforming, um, but that is what is before us every single day. And where did that come from? Very transparent here. When I was engaging with the PAC during, um, um, during our virtual time together and we were having some of these discussions and I was taking notes and I was having my team stay up all night to help me think through and, and process uh, what we heard. What came out of that was that our parents wanted to know that their children were known, that they were cared for, that they were supported and valued as MPS students. And that is where our commitment is. Um, as we're starting our planning, um, as we're engaging with families and community, we know as families are deciding is what's best for my kid, I want you to know that it is our deep desire that everything that you experience is around our mantra of every student being known and us being responsive and engaging to get there. Um, we have have a journey, we have work to do, but that is our commitment. Um, and again, as an MPS product myself and sitting in many, many different seats, um, that's where our hearts and minds and our work will continue to be. We will miss the boat if we do not capitalize on our mantra of every student known. Um, and so I know I have some of my principal leaders here, they will tell you, we talk about this every time uh, <laughs> we are together. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? for every student to be known. And so these questions you've heard today will help us drive forward uh, uh, two pieces of good news. We're working on um, um, kind of reimagining and bringing back some of our parent university opportunities. We're engaging more uh, with our families. The team is hard at work 
uh, with that plan. Um, as a previous principal, I will tell you at a high school, my last one, uh, we have one of the most engaged parent organizations. So it can happen. Um, and we're going to continue to reflect on what that looks like from elementary school to middle school to high school, as well as our ELCs um, as well. And so, um, again, I, I've taken some of your reflections and notes. We'll put some meat around the bones, around what it looks like as we move forward. I hear um, equity. I hear prioritizing and integrating the mental health supports for everyone. I hear safety. Um, I hear all of that. And I think this was important for um, Chair Bugs and I to hear today to reflect on so that we can be responsive to your voices and what you desire for your students and their experiences in Metro National Public Schools. So thank you for being here. Thank you for engaging with us and lifting your voices um, today so that we can do what's needed and necessary. Last thing I will say, uh, thank you to the leadership of the PAC for helping us to develop this agenda that we didn't quite get to. But um, when I was a teacher, I did have a, maybe a, a misrepresentation of what was happening across all 160 schools for all 83,000 students. And it has been phenomenal to watch Dr. Battle, and it will be great to see Dr. Battle as both our director of schools and as a parent, because our board is full of MNPS parents. Some of them are parents to graduates, and some of us are parents to the littlest babies. And so none of this is lost on us. We're not sending our babies anywhere else because we love this district and we understand that we're running it. But I just wanted to note that there are a couple things that were in this agenda, agenda around academics, around communication, and around even transportation that is being addressed in our, um, in our budget. Dr. Battle and her team spent a full day riding buses, I mean, at three and four o'clock in the morning, starting out with bus drivers till, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the evening, sitting with bus drivers, oh, I'm sorry, riding buses with bus drivers and students to kind of understand what feedback needed to be garnered and what next steps need to be looked at. That's the kind of innovation that we're looking for for the next few years around our strategic planning and around goals we have set for Dr. Battle in this district. So just know that more is on the horizon. We will continue to work with you all to see what, uh, what times for town halls and PAC meetings will look like across all uh, 12 clusters and certainly district-wide. Uh, Mrs. Masters? Yeah, thank you. I just, I, I know I need to draw this meeting to a close. I do want to mention though, this is the final town hall of this school year. And I want to acknowledge our PAC leaders and all, every parent who participated in parent advisory council work this year. Um, it has been a true pleasure for me to serve as the liaison. Bibi and I have even gotten into it a few times. Like, you know, we, we like to, we like to mix it up. Um, but have we, we have come out of it, you know, very close and I have, have just enjoyed the collaboration with all of you so much. And I also wanted to mention uh, that, you know, we are sitting here with the superintendent of the year for the state of Tennessee. <laughs> That, sorry, that is something that, that is a result of Dr. Battle's hard work, but also I believe of the high level of collaboration that takes place within schools, throughout the district, with parents like the Parent Advisory Council. You know, it's all, it's everyone working together. And so I feel like that award is exemplary of all of the work that goes in to ensure that level of communication. Um, so with that, I will wrap this up and this advisory council advisory committee meeting is adjourned thank you this has been a service of the metro nashville network if you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs visit nashville.gov 